suffering has always been a choice. We choose to suffer. Exactly. Because we can choose not to when we change the story up here. Yeah. So we're ready. My initial podcast topic anxiety. What does the dictionary say? It says anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. And another one is it's a strong desire or concern to do something or for something to happen. All right, that's what dictionary says. And what do you two says? When you hear word anxiety, what is the first thought that is running through your head? Ladies first. Okay, go on, Nate. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, so when I hear anxiety, um, uh, I cannot help myself, uh, but to connect it to nutrition because uh, that's what I do. And uh, anxiety, like the not the hardcore anxiety, is actually connected to our hormones, and our hormones are connected to the to food, to what we eat. So. That that's that pops in my mind. All right. What is your definition of anxiety? The defin. Are you asking me what's my definition? Yes. Uh, um. My definition would be that um, anxiety is, is a, a feeling in in your guts. <laughs> <laughs> you you kind of feel it in your guts um, and it goes all over your body. So it starts in your guts and it goes all over your body and it's connected to something you are afraid of and it's not mm, many times it's not even rational. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Thank you, Ula. What about you, Nate? Uh, I will have to agree with you once again uh, based on what we talked about uh, the other time mm-hmm. when you said fear is basically... Uh, anxiety is basically fear squared Mm -hmm. so it's just fear upon fear upon fear which consists of stories that we tell ourselves i stick with that all right cool i'm glad that you took it on (laughs) you know (laughs) but 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 yeah right so so for me anxiety is like 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 i said it'd be like you said it so i that is my definition but to add on it's just like what you two both said together. So it it has a strong body sensation that you're kind of a stuck and then all fueled with fear on the fear on the fear on the fear on the stories. All right, cool. So we covered that and chat, you can share with us, you know, what do you guys hear or what is your definition of anxiety or, or you know, whatever is first thought in your mind when you hear word anxiety we're glad to to include you in the in the uh today's topic so um all right any so Ula, would you to start with you did you have any uh um how to say experience with hardcore anxieties because here we we need to say this i didn't right I didn't have any hardcore anxieties in my life like that. I would be really like petrified, stopped on the spot. And, you know, that was it. At least not that I'm aware of. So, uh, so that's why I'm asking. So I will share from based of fear, but we already did on topic fear. So I want to hear more about, you know, did because one thing is being afraid and then being anxious is whole another thing. So Ula, go for it. Yeah, for sure it is. I see f- being afraid or fear is like just something in your head, but when you're anxious, it's like your whole body goes crazy and you can hear things that are not there and you see things that are not there. And uh, Well, I will need you to request held, that um, you held your mic um, because it goes into your okay. hair and then it... Can you hear me now? Yeah, Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, let me repeat. No, we, we heard you yeah? great, so you just continue. Always. Okay, 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 okay. So, um, yeah, I had two experiences 
they were both at the end connected to my hormones. Uh, one came from um, uh, drugs, uh, like uh, speed and yeah, speed and co uh, cocaine. Uh, and the other came from uh, really hardcore dieting and overtraining. Um, so basically what happened with the first one, um, when I stopped uh, competing, I went crazy because I thought that I missed the whole world out there and I need to try everything. I never tried uh, cocaine before, but then I did and I did it multiple times and um, like right away, but eventually uh, my, my system, my, my system in the body collapsed and um, I got anxious and uh, I would be anxious about like everyday stuff, like even going to the bus was creepy or going to uh, sitting in the classroom. I could, I would be sitting in the back of the classroom, but I would hear uh, my teacher talking like he's screaming in my ear. So it was really bad and I wanted to get over it. So um, I, I didn't want anyone, anyone to know because it, for me, it was embarrassing, right? So I dealt with it by myself. So my plan was, okay, I'm going to go to to school and I'm going to sit there first for 15 minutes, then I'll go out and the next time for 20 and so on and so on. Two years to actually overcome all those feelings. Uh, they still can come back really tired and um, I didn't eat well uh, for a few days that time it comes back um the other one was with the crazy dieting and overtraining. um my hormone imbalance was really bad uh, they told me i will never have kids because it's so bad um but now i'm i'm fine i'm great <laughs> so um uh but what happened was that when my hormones were all over the place they were like i would felt like something's wrong in my body and i would feel that electricity in my body and i would be really anxious and at some point i would even feel like old computers you would like they they would uh freeze and then you would press the button right uh i felt like that like i'm that computer and somebody pressed the button and just reset me so that was like two of the most hardcore uh, experiences um, of my life about uh, uh, being anxious. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I can see they still come up sometimes when, when I'm not taking care of myself. All right. I mean, thank you for, first of all, for sharing this, right? And to be honest, me and Ula are friends, but I didn't know this up until today when she was actually visiting us and, 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 you know, we all know she is a therapeutic massage. So me and Ula, me and Ursha both get, <coughs> get a massage. So I'm like, oh, she likes now all powered up, few full of energy. So, you know, uh, all due to my relaxed back, uh, which is awesome. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, so thank you again for, for sharing this, you know, it's like sharing it out there that you were taking drugs. It's, it's, something most people usually don't do right so so thank you for that then to share the experience so we have a, a, a question mr jp so she said similar heavy feeling in chest and stomach stress feeling you want to run away hide from the world is what anxiety is for her and she's asking is this common for cocaine or was this just your experience mm, as far as i know it's pretty common i think Mm -hmm. um not if you take it once i mean or maybe i don't know but um that are on hard drugs like cocaine um they 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 get even schizophrenics mm -hmm. right uh but anxiety is like the the first step <laughs> and then if you continue yeah you start hearing things seeing things and so on um 
it changes why because it changes your um nervous system right mm -hmm. cocaine changes your nervous system uh the connections in your brain and your whole body so even the sensations of the electricity in your body that's connected to your um nervous system and you need two years to to get it back to normal uh sometimes it can happen you can never get it back to normal because you know you can imagine like um electricity outside on the road mm -hmm. uh if it gets i don't know the tree falls on and you have to fix it and sometimes um in our body is so bad that um even our body that's amazing machine cannot fix it anymore and uh, i i really believe that me sharing that i was using drugs stop competing um in sport is really important because i know many young um uh, athletes uh, when they stop they they don't know what to do with their life they lose their drive and they try to find it in drugs right and, and um, it can get really scary for me the experience was scary i was afraid what's gonna happen to me i didn't understand that anxiety um i didn't want to talk to anyone because i was uh, embarrassed i was using drugs um, I didn't want my family to know. Um, I was a role model for so many people. So it was, yeah, it was completely embarrassing. And at the other hand, I felt like I'm losing the um, connection with the reality sometimes. So it was, the I think, the worst two years of my life. But I would not change that because I learned so many things at that time like how important it is to actually take care of our body and that it's it's not necessary to try everything that's outside in the world yeah right <laughs> i have a saying uh try if you don't know try like like try it if you don't know right um so it's either you try it or you don't talk about it if you didn't try it. But I always say don't try everything. So the, the, these are the types that I'm encouraging don't don't try. But people do try them and, you know, it's out there. It's among us. If you, do, if you do it, it's just like human beings are doing it. And we are dealing with people more or less. We just don't know, right? Just like with you. You were dealing with this and people around you probably thought no she's doing fine she's an athlete she knows how to take off her body so she goes out there gets drunk but that's the the only thing and in case many more things are happening and it's good thing to talk about it so thank you Ola, for that you know so so just share it guys look it's nothing is wrong or bad good or wrong here it's just like all right you do drugs and now you have to deal with consequences whatever for Ula was the anxiety and and all those body sensations so she dealt with them right it didn't work for her to take drugs so and now she did something about it that her life works and that's all that matters in that retrospective so uh all right Ula. uh and second one was because of the dieting it, it we already talked about a lot of times uh because it, it anyway right it's all life so all the topics we cover here are more or less connected or, or crossroading each other so uh, and by the way hi clement so you coming in uh thanks for being here uh so but would you say those two were connected so it was first the drugs and then dieting or was the vice versa just trying to understand the situation actually how it went um first was the dieting because uh, i'm sorry because i i had to do it for the sport because I was competing in uh, martial arts and I needed to wait uh, for the competition, right? Uh, so I, I did the dieting because I didn't understand my body and neither did my trainers as I can see now uh, because that was really crazy. Like I wouldn't eat for three days and drink water and go to sauna just to lose weight. It was really killing my body actually. Um, and later when I, I stopped with that, um, I didn't have a, a reason to, to starve myself. So I gained weight, right? I gained like, 
like 10 kilos and I really felt bad about myself. Uh, when I discovered drugs, I realized when I'm on, on drugs, I don't need to eat because I'm not hungry like for three days, right? Um, so it's really simple to lose weight, but um, yeah, the, the pay, the, what you have to pay for that later, it's really not worth it. Um, and then when I over, uh, overcame the, the drugs, uh, um, uh, I went back to, to training and I started my own brand right girl power and then i wanted to be a, um, a role model for the the ladies so i wanted to really look good and then that was the time when i started with crazy dieting again uh that was the only thing i knew um i tried like i don't know how many diets and i was in the fitness industry and they would tell me oh do that diet do this diet uh, don't, don't eat this da 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 and uh, do the cheat day and then it would start right it would start like six days in a week i would eat clean which wasn't clean it was just crazy um kind of cutting down the weight um and the water from my system actually messed up with my hormones and then the, the i know on sunday i would go crazy because I missed all the food and I don't know the sugar and the the junk food and I would go and I would eat everything like 10,000 calories right and that would be a complete shock for my body and for the whole system and uh, we know that uh, white like the sugar we get from the the I don't know the sweets the the cakes and everything it's actually like a cocaine even worse so um it was the same story again just i didn't know it because it's so common and normal to eat sugar right all right thank you once again really thank you to, to, to say it like this and that well we'll look into it a little bit more after after also nate's tell us uh, uh his experience uh, because <clears throat> one thing i want to get out there is is like you know all right, one thing is body sensations going with anxiety, right? But, and you said, I was even afraid of going to the bus stop, but maybe even a little bit more, right? Like you're being at home, what's going on? So that people who have anxious people around them can actually understand them. And maybe then you will also share how you to overcome it and, and what would be helpful from the outside world and what are the tips from the inside world, so to speak. So, so all right. Yeah. Nate, well, what was your experience? Uh, I mean, we did talk a little bit about it, but right, it was in Slovenia, yeah. so right. Uh, yeah, I, I can't help but to, to refer back to our first conversation. So mm. uh, I guess anxiety follows every day. It's just there. Mm. And if you don't settle the score, you know, beforehand of, of each event you are anxious about, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show itself physically like she, like uh, Ulo said or uh uh it's gonna come out to a mental breakdown so, so from, from my experience i still uh, for this interview i had i was very anxious and i had uh, this uh, recording with a friend this morning and i couldn't sleep the, uh, last night so uh for me it's just always there you know uh, when it comes to meeting new people new events uh, the things that i don't know it's always uh, the same principle it's the, the, the safe zone that you know, and then there's everything outside that zone. And the moment you picture yourself stepping out of that zone, uh, anxiety comes, you know, it's, it's a package deal. Mm -hmm. So if you don't uh, force yourself to, to beat it head on with uh, uh, focusing on, on, you know, noticing the stories that you tell yourself and uh, stopping the bad outcomes, then you've lost already. So what I do is I just, you know, sit down and take the time to convince myself it's not that bad and the outcome is going to be good or at least uh, a neutral. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but it's there every day uh, before every big event or small, you know, because uh, events are as big as you make them in your head. You know, yeah. the people that you're going to meet are as important as you make them in your head. So, again, it's all projection of our mind all the time. Yeah, and, and can you share us... Uh... I, I totally agree with everything you you said. I thank you for letting us in and and shared it openly that it's you know it's still going on. But 
you take it's here's like you take responsibility daily for it and if you don't then you're stopped which is something yeah. that you don't want uh and can share like uh, one or two examples of how it really stopped you and what was going on at that time oh uh, i can't think of a, a, a special event but uh, it, it's all the same story if you if you let the, the bad thoughts just roam around and mm-hmm. fill you up with fear uh you're a presentation your your let's say you have a concert or you have a, a recording like i had this morning you're gonna be physically shaking you're gonna not be able to speak you're gonna uh, just like you know how, mm-hmm. how do you stutter say? stutter stutter yeah right. and uh, it comes it's 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 all connected with your mind and the way you choose to see the events the the world yourself and people mm-hmm. around you um but I, I will come back to it when if I think of one. So. Yeah. I mean, when we had a talk show, you shared example of how it was for you because uh, Matias is your big brother and his success and oh. how that, how that yeah. Yeah. falls back down on you. So maybe you can, if you remember now something uh, out of that. Yeah, sure. Uh, the biggest uh, break, let's say, or, or breaking point was uh, every, every time that somebody asked me uh, why I don't play basketball anymore since I have all this ad- these uh, advantages and natural talents. And for me, it was like uh, I wasn't living my own life. It was just me f- being forced by someone to play this role. And of course, I was, I was dying inside, you know, I was screaming. I was, it, 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 it wasn't me but I had to go along because most of the people around me were satisfied with the path they chose or I mm-hmm. chose for myself. And it was, it was just anguish. It was torture for me. It actually was. And I, I used to say to my friends a lot of times that um, I understand those people that uh, come to work uh, one day with a machine gun mm-hmm. and ju- just let loose. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I would do it, but sometimes if you, you don't have the, the power to be yourself or to fight these stories. Uh, that kind of outcome seems logical. Mm-hmm. It's the next logical step because uh, a person can only take so much. And you, if you're not taught self-love and if and you're not taught uh, self-preservation mm-hmm. you know, with your mind mostly, uh, that's uh, how things usually end up. Yeah, cool. Just to give a little background to everybody who is with us. so. So Nate's brother, Matias, is a famous basketball player in Slovenia. He won a couple of EuroLeague titles playing for big clubs in Europe, never went to NBA, but really it's a big name in, in Europe, in Slovenia still. Uh, and Nate was kind of a growing up in his shadow. Like he said, he's also talented in basketball. And then he had to play basketball. Everybody was expected, right? If his big brother is playing it. Yeah, exactly, right? He's having camp and everything. Uh, so he has to do it as well. And that is where he shared from. That was, he was dying. Here. For those of you who doesn't know the background. So, so, all right. Like you said, all right, it grows in our mind. Like, right? It's fear upon a fear upon a fear. It was, it was for you. And then for Rula coming from a body, uh, let's say outside right drugs and and food like it's it's all connected to mind of course right so she said ah now i stop doing sports i need to catch all those things that i missed during a sports career and i will i will do everything i will party hard try everything right and and that comes it's kind of saying so so if you guys relate give us the the insight like how it is how or how it was in everyday life right it's just like because for most people, it's like, all right, I wake up, I do this thing and I go to work and then after work, I come home and I do those things. And 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 I would say more or less, we all are afraid of something because we're human beings, right? And we are not all living anxious, like being stopped by fear, really stopped, uh, like can do something like, like Nate said, or with all those uh, things, you start stutter or totally freeze and stuff like that. So. So how it is like in everyday life and, and how would then people around you, like what would you need in that time that people would do or say that would kind of comfort you or comfort you or support you in, into whatever you're up against? Tell me. Yeah, you can go and then we'll... Oh, okay. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. I oh, guess oh, I am the girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I think understanding is the basis of all relationships. Mm -hmm. So I, I tend to be uh, the most understanding one in any given situation because uh, people do uh, unto others as they want done to themselves or something like that. And if anything uh, people can do for you, for me, for in, in that kind of situation, is just show some understanding because that's mm -hmm. all that matters. We are all the same, like you said. We all have these interior wheels that, that move at, at a certain ratio. And uh, if you know yourself, you know everyone around you. You know, so dig deep and be honest with yourself. And sooner or later, you will find out that if you show humility and understanding for everyone, there's nothing to fear. And, you know, and, until you, you find that spot in yourself, uh, you, you judge people. You judge mm -hmm. people ba based on your experience, you, through your eyes, and you, you, uh, <laughs> you give them roles in your life, you know, mm -hmm. like a movie. And you, you just have these uh, measurements for, for every person, you know. And of course, once you look through these eyes, uh, you, you look at yourself the same way and assign yourself a role in their lives. Mm. And once you, you are able to see the, the, this, this matrix that is here but doesn't have to be, you can step back and you can reassess the whole situation and just be a person, be here, be here now and just let people be who they are, you know. Mm. So understanding is key, no matter who you are or who you are up against. Right. And the question that comes for me with it is, all right, so I would see something is off with you, right? And I came <clears> to you and I would say, and it's, I think something's going on. Are you okay? Would you, but be honest, right? Would, maybe nowadays you would, but go right. back, right? Would you, would you say, or would you like camouflage it then and pretend or fake it? That, no, no, I'm good. I'm all right. Yeah. This is the, the most common uh, answer. I'm okay. You know, I don't really, you don't really care. You're just saying this, you know, mm. you, again, you, you make stories in your head about the situation that you're in mm. instead of just participating in the conversation, whether you meant it or not, there was an opportunity to share. Mm. But the old me, like you said, uh, had too much pride, too much, you know, angst, too much, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. The wall was just too high. Mm. And I would just say, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. But like you said, you would notice I was not <clears throat> nearly okay. Uh, but probably wouldn't share mm. or because we didn't know each other enough, you know, we yeah, but, close enough. but would you, so what to do in that kind of cases, you know, what would you say? What would, what do you think would work? Uh, we are going now, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm dealing a lot with teenagers. So, so let's yeah, say, yeah. you know, close but, relations like parents, yeah. kids or, or uh, partners between them. Right. Again, I'm going to say patience and understanding, you know, you can, mm. you, there's never uh, too much of this these two things. So maybe, you know, if you, you find yourself again in a situation like this, where you obviously see someone in need and they won't share, all you can really do is give them time and patience, and, you know, mm -hmm. understand that they are suffering and it's not easy to go through that wall. Yeah. But your, your consistency, uh, by being patient and understanding will eventually, uh, let them in or they will let you in. That's all there is. Show them love and, respect I, I don't know what to say yeah just what you just said love and respect yeah. uh, it's all the, like uh, how you listen to people like you said yeah. before right yeah uh, you have to be a good listener you know you have to put yourself out of the equation yeah well listening from how to say listening <clears throat> other human beings so human being in front of you without you being in the yeah. conversation yeah, so yeah speak, absolutely right? like you said with those assessments and stuff like that so all right great uh Ula, anything for you um yeah it was great uh sharing mates thank you um so uh for me my experience um the time when it was really bad uh so it would be uh, uh, a daily thing so, so I would wake up with it and I would go to bed with it um, what I needed was first thing you should know that you really feel ashamed because of it 
you are confused because you don't know what's going on uh, and you're afraid that this will never end. So um, the, what I needed was, yeah, understanding, love, um, compassion, and mostly I needed space. Like uh, even physically I needed space because I got super like nervous i cannot explain it to you it's horrible when somebody would come too close like, like i would be like stay there don't come even my partner at that time um he was such a sweet guy like uh when i decided to to stop drugs um helped me to to get over it uh i'm moved to his place because i needed to change the environment um and even him like he was not allowed to to come close to me or to hug me or anything understood it and he said okay better because it was up and down just tell me so i can hug you mm -hmm. so it's actually i really needed understanding and uh, the physical space and space to be alone when needed and if I could express because sometimes it was so bad I could not talk <laughs> um, so yeah actually I think it must be pretty hard to live with someone like that if I look at it back in time I think it wasn't easy um, but um, if I would not have him at that time who who knew what's going on with me and understood and accepted, I don't know what would happen with me because it was it was just the the time of my life when I didn't know if I'm gonna survive or what's gonna happen. So it's really the understanding and even if you don't understand what's going on with the person, um just accept that something hard or 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 horrible or whatever is going on inside him and um but the the other thing that helped me so not the if, if i'm not talking about other people and the environment but about myself um uh, what helped me was uh, um, sport moving in nature um the other thing was uh daily habits so like a routine uh, and the third thing was um, start to eat normally. So eat actually healthy, um, to eat many times per day. So it wasn't too stressful for my body. For that, I ate like two times and I would do the overeating thing. And it was stressful for my body, for my system. So like five times per day, small portions, a lot of fruits and veggies and uh, take care of my um, um, sugar, break, um, sugar level, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, because if it goes too high, it also goes down. And then when your blood sugar goes down, you actually get more anxious. Um, so those kind of things really help me. And uh, even today, um, I'm trying to keep the the, the daily routines the the healthy habits to go to to uh, the woods and hug a tree and uh, do some breathing exercises, some meditation uh, to to find myself again. Because I also believe that when you get anxious, your energy spread all around you, and when you're you're able to get it back in inside you and just feel yourself. It, you come down and that's also the time when your mind um, settles down and gets calmer right and that's when you're it's easier to um, to control your mind and when you control your mind you control your body you control how you feel all right cool anything you want to add Nate uh, I think we're on the same page all right well i guess that, those are the tips how to deal with it from your from yourself in and then you know all right that is going on with you right 
And then there are people, loved ones around you, and you will have mentioned, right? You cannot imagine how it is for the people outside, right? Living with you. So, and, and it is in a way, you know, me imagining now that I'm being like Ula's partner or let's say Nate's friend or somebody really close to you. It's like you, you watch this person you really love, right? And you don't know what to do. And the natural thing, usually what we human beings does is, all right, it's my fault. Somehow I did something <laughs> wrong. That's why, I don't know, my brother, my friend, my girlfriend, partner, whoever, my kid doesn't talk to me because there is something, you know, you know how, that's how we human beings go, right? It, it's something that, you know, if parents are arguing, kids will think they did something wrong, right? Just like, all right, it's my fault. I'm kid. They're arguing because of me and, you know. Stuff like that. So, so now that is the other consequence of people being really anxious. So, what would you guys say was like really the the source, or is the source of your anxiety? Like, if you really look, you know, you gotta probably look really back and when it first time happens and how you you were. We could say how your mind or I don't know, mind state was at that time or what was going on at that time in your life. Whoever have... wanna uh-huh. whoever wanna... yeah, go go. Um I think that everything uh, comes down to the same stem, which is called trauma. Mm-hmm. So uh again, we're gonna have to talk about our last conversation. Yeah, all right, that's okay, uh, you know. Trauma. It's physical, emotional, uh, or emotional trauma from your childhood. It's the way you are taught to live when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. It is simply the way that you accept that you have to live because it's the only way you know how to. And if if that uh, uh, let's say stage of your life is let's say the first ten years or whatever are traumatic, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna probably end up in a mental institution or somewhere near it, like most of us here are. Uh, So uh, you have to regain the power that they have taken from you or not taught you Mm -hmm. of. (laughs) Because uh, we think we have to live a certain way. We we think we have to react a certain way to to, 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 uh, different stimuli. But the simple fact is that we have to teach our children that uh, uh, the control of our mind is our own mm. and no one else's. And because we, we lack in this department ever since birth and through all the education to, to school and, and until they are grown enough to take care of themselves, they are formed. We are formed. And uh, inserting this type of education is, is I think, mandatory mm. uh, to, to teach kids what we should have learned when we were kids, that we have the power to control our mind. Everything stems from that. And if you are convinced that you are something, you get used to it. Mm-hmm. And if you, you are convinced that you are something at a young enough age, you believe it. You think it's your DNA. You, you do not divide these things anymore. You simply, as, as far back as you can go, is this wall. And this is me, you say. This is me. This is how I react. It's not. Everything you are is taught somebody taught you all the reactions that you know all the words all the feelings mm-hmm. i mean they didn't teach you the feelings but what you associate with these feelings feelings is taught to you was taught to you so you you owe it to yourself to reprogram your mind yeah so there it, it really it's not a question of how it started when it started we're all the same we are all the same and the trick is to be honest with yourself and just start over. You can fix yourself. Everybody can mm-hmm. if you just believe you can. All right. Well, anything you want to add? Yeah. Uh, um, for me, is my belief that I'm not important enough. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, it comes from uh, when I was actually a baby and um, my mom, I love her to death, 
um, but at that time she was not able to take care of me, not, not like physically, but emotionally. And uh, she would say to me later that she didn't feel loved uh, towards me. Um, so I was always running around uh, after her and trying to be important enough you know, for her to love me or to hug me. And I remember one night uh, when I was, I guess, four or something, I would be lying down in the bed and she would uh, put me to sleep. And I would say to her, Mom, please, I, 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 I can feel that how much I just wanted her love, her, you know, just her time, her energy just to be with me there and I would say to her like I would be an adult I would say to her mom would you song because she never had time to read me the stories I mean that's what she said and uh, I knew that the, the the poem or song is way shorter right so I would can you just sing me a, a song and she would go I cannot sing hmm. and I would go I know you can, like from pure love and really the intention just to, to her to do something for me. So I, yeah, I am important enough. So I re remember that that night something touched her and she sang for me a short poem. And uh, yeah, I was really, really happy that time. So that's something that's still here for me. I'm not important enough. And um, it comes up when I go to important meetings. Who am I? Why I'm talking to that manager? You know what? Da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm not important enough, logically. And um, when it comes to big opportunities, and I know I have uh, great ideas or great um, products, but I, it's just something there. Like you don't really recognize it in your head, but it's just a feeling. I'm not important enough. So, but now that I know that, that I can feel the feeling, and then I relate it. Oh, it's just this. It's much easier um, to to actually do things or go for meetings and so on. Yeah. All right. I mean, thank you. Thank you both for, for sharing this. And, and yeah, definitely, you know, me thinking about it, I would say agree with Nate's, right? You know, there, there are events happening to uh, when we grow up and inside of that we are formed. We could say like that is the time when our identity got constructed the way it is. Uh, and, and then all you can do actually is like then you will have said and also Nate, uh, you both said it in you know, you take responsibility for it. All right, this is the thought. This is how I always already go right into a meeting. And I can change it. I can be like, all right, I'm not important enough. And I can rock and roll this meeting. So that's how yeah. somehow you acknowledge it. You're not resisting it. You're not like like putting a, a, a wall up against between anything. You're just like, all right, I'm afraid and I'm going to do it that you know and then you go out and do it so yeah and yeah. eventually you can even you can did i froze no 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 that you oh. let in yourself uh, sorry did, did I, I froze i think i don't know how how or why but can you repeat that uh what was i saying uh, oh yeah you yeah. can uh you know like ula said before the meeting uh the story comes up you know i'm mm -hmm. not good enough i'm not good enough and if you, if you do a certain uh, amount of exercises every day, if you just uh, with simple auto suggestions, you you change the story. Mm -hmm. So your your subconscious mind, you can re replace this story inside of your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So if you take the time every day, like let's say half an hour or whatever, and you you just talk to yourself, you know, you uh, like the story now is I'm not good enough, and you because she, you said and it comes up before every meeting or something and now you take this word and and you just you oppose it mm. you say i am good enough and when you say it enough times 
the, the, the scales will tip. So now it's like, it's like this, I'm not good enough. Uh, you heard it more times. Mm. And when you say I'm good enough more times, the scales will tip. It, this is a guaranteed fact. I can, I can tell you it works. If you say it every day, you can silence the voice that said, I'm not good enough. Mm. Try it. It's so easy. The only thing standing in your way is your ego. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't mean to be offensive. No, no, no. That that is true. You know, we we are not offended here, both of us, me and Ula. We, you know, we we get it. I can say we get it, and it's everything I say as well, right? Brain is a muscle. Absolutely. So you know, we trained for how many years? However, you guys who are watching this are old. You know, uh, <laughs> you trained for that many years. Like let's say, let's suppose we trained twenty years of I'm not good enough. Yeah, exactly. And then you know. You can train faster now with Absolutely. whatever, however you want to replace it. You don't even, you don't even, if I may suggest here, right, or go, go with it is you don't even need to oppose it, right? Because it's what also come up with human being is that there is something wrong with us and we need to fix us. <laughs> and I want to come from a place that there is nothing wrong with us. You're okay. You're whole, perfect and complete the way you are. And you have this thought, I'm not good enough. All right, cool. You have a thought. So what? You go uh, walk uh, on the street and you probably have 100 random thoughts that you have no power over them. They're just random thoughts. They come into your head, <laughs> whether you like it or not. You cannot stop thinking. You say, I'm not going to think now. And then you'll be like, what's going on? And that came up on its own. <laughs> we didn't really choose it, right? So. So yeah, so you can actually replace it with I'm good enough or whatever you want to replace it. And, and then, yeah, you got to train it. And that is uh, great, yeah. great what you're suggesting. So, so how to deal with anxieties as well. And of course, first of all, to acknowledge it, not to run from it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To, to share it and, and talk about it. So, so yeah, uh, awesome. <clears throat> and it's like, you know, we can come up also with this, what is, because it's a good thing that we are talking about that, right? Before we before we started, I made a little joke, right? Do you think they talk about anxiety in the let's say medieval ages? You know, two armies went up each other, and then the you know the soldiers were suiting up, and one guy, hey, hey man, I'm anxious tonight. Uh, I, I will not fight tomorrow because you know I'm afraid of the sword. So, and then the general said, "All right, go to the psychologist, deal with it, and join us when you're good to go." So, so probably not, right? And and but it was there still. I bet it was right. It was like for whatever reason, if they were human beings, we are human beings. So, like you said, we are all one. We more or less operate the same way. With different stories, <laughs> that's the, the only difference. And we don't want to, you know. And and that's why they say love can conquer all. But you know, to to say it in here into the anxious world, I would say to the anxious, just bring love. And then you Nate said it in in our talk show, like like self love. Can you say something more about that? Because I think that's really important. Because one guy asked me. What is the uh, uh, opposite of love, right? You, I'm sorry, you froze. I froze. For about 10 seconds. Really? Did I froze on chat as well? Uh, I want to know that if it's going on on Discord or it's going on on stream as well. Because then I will figure out something. Chat, can you share with me? Um, but Please repeat the question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I said... Uh, if speaking into the anxious world, the love is the answer. And you were saying in the talk show, uh, you know, self-love. And and I was just wanna before I let I, I ask you, can you say something more about that? And before that, I wanna say you did I didn't froze there. All right, cool. Then it's just something on the Discord. Something, something. All right, we'll figure out, find some other better program for it. Thank you guys. Um, so it was like one guy. Once I asked me, what is the opposite of love? Hmm. And then somebody said, no, it was a question on Facebook. My bad. He put it in the, in the feed. What is the opposite of love? And then one guy answered, it's hate. And I, and I, and I answered uh, in the bottom of that. I said, if you want to hate somebody, you first have to love that person. Hmm. 
You cannot hate something that you don't love. It's. I froze the game for those two. What's going on with the Discord? I can see it. Que pasa? I froze the game, right? Yeah. Both of you did, actually. <laughs> really? So yeah. Discord is having funny business. Um, all right, let's hope it works. So, so what is the opposite of love? And that guy answered hate. And I said, uh, uh, the hate, if you want to hate somebody, you have to love him. I mean, or that person or something. Hate doesn't go without love. That is bottom line. And that for me, right? How I see it. So I think love doesn't have the opposite. It just is. It yeah, is. I always agree. is there. Now it's just so new whether you want to, you know, yeah. love somebody it, it, or you it's don't. It's in a league of its own. Yeah, right. And it's always there for yeah. everybody, I would say. For it's everybody. a choice you can always make. Yeah. Well, so, uh, but you said, right, that how you, uh, how you start dealing with anxiety was bringing in self-love. So my question is, can you say more about that? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I was, until recently, I was my number one hater. And I mean it in the full sense of the word. Um, you know, when you imagine people not liking you, you all you're doing is you not liking yourself <laughs> in your head. And the stories that you allow to continue, uh, you allow in your head. The reality outside has n no uh, connection to what's going on inside of you. So you might hear a bad comment uh, once or twice, and, and your ego clings on to it and repeats it and repeats it and repeats it. Because the ego wants to suffer. That's his, uh, let's say, his food source. Mm -hmm. Okay, he wants it's nature, to suffer, right? We could call yeah. it nature. He, yeah. he needs to suffer because he wants to maintain the state that we are in. Mm -hmm. He cannot let go of this life of, of the state of living and, and wellness. And because of that, the ego uh, uh, seeks out pain in every in any situation. It is his food. Simply as we eat and drink water, he eats pain, suffering. And w once you realize that, you realize that you were feeding your ego pain. And uh, the way that you were doing this was uh, constructing or, or finding pain or suffering or, or an opportunity to suffer in every single situation you were in. And that, that's, the, that's the ego that needs uh, to suffer. And you need to isolate that part of yourself and realize that you're not your ego. And then life can continue uh, with love. Because ego will not allow self-love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you cannot, uh, it cannot coexist. You can either choose love, uh, self-love, and love for life and everyone around you, or you can choose your ego. And he will absolutely choose suffering, uh, meaning that he will uh, uh, seek out conflict where there might not be some, and seek out pain and bad memories where, you know, <laughs> where other people may have not, may not have had bad memories of a certain situation you were in, but you, your ego will find it. Therefore, mm. it is crucial to identify your ego and eliminate it from your life as much as you can. Of course, you can't kill it, but, you know, tense it, mm. stop it, love yourself. Yeah. 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 It is what you said, right? I mean, you can kill, you can kill it, and some people do, and those people do suicides. That's how you kill your ego. But we got to say it, right? That's how it is. One one consequences of the anxiety happens in that. Absolutely. One, Absolutely. one happens in, in what you said before, right? There are people who, who go out there and just randomly shoot other people. So, so yeah. yeah. Um, hello, Mikey. You can finally chat. Good to have you in chat. And Sazdov too. Thank you for the follow. And he says, hi from the best neighbor. Have no idea who you are, who you're saying that to, but hi to you, man. Glad <laughs> to be my neighbor. And welcome to the JP fam community. Hope you enjoy your stay. Um, yeah, and, and right, but that, that goes all over, I would say, right? What you just what you just said. Recognize it. And I think that is the thing where us human beings are stopped the most, right? And and it shows up in anxiety for, for some and others have uh, other ways but whenever you don't feel joy in life your ego it is playing your life yeah right. absolutely huh. he yeah. enjoys it he wants to be the victim yeah he enjoys being the victim that that's all there is yeah and it's everybody and wanna, else's fault yeah, yeah if, if you uh, want a better life if you want to stop that that, that reoccurring 
uh, pattern you have to use to uh, you know make a change mm -hmm. have it's to be ounce. willing i would say for right yeah well uh, for, for me and for many people i mm -hmm. believe you have to hit that rock bottom mm -hmm. that absolute zero where things cannot get worse where you, like we talked about before or did we yeah <laughs> uh, where, where there is no choice really mm -hmm. you have you go into a mental institution or you, or you try some pills or something or you seek out other ways to try to find what all this is all about mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and, and really thank you both for sharing, like, like you know, uh, because it's like we all grew in different kind of situation, right? So, and, and we all go through traumas. Some are might be bigger, some are smaller, but for our ego, like, like you said it, they're, they're all the same. Doesn't matter. Like some people might get not love from the parents. Some people might have bigger brother successful. Some people might get, you know, uh, different kind of traumas like physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, stuff like that. But but in the end, all those events are in the past. What is here with us now are <clears throat> the decisions our ego made, and that's how it goes. That's how it you can, goes. You can yeah. simply you can identify people mm -hmm. who live by their ego or uh, people who choose to go around it. You know, when you're in a social social situation, when you listen to people talk about themselves. There's a very uh, obvious distinction. Mm -hmm. You will have people who will never mention uh, things that define them, or will yeah, uh, or, or, or will agree with you and say I understand. And there are people who cannot stop talking about uh, how somebody fucked them over. Mm -hmm. You know that that's that's a big distinction. So this kind of person is addicted to their ego. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and any kind of help from you, from us, listening to this person would, would result uh, in his eyes as aggression, mm -hmm. as hate, because he is not able to perceive around his ego uh, uh, um, to see the, the help that we are trying to offer. And uh, on the other hand, when you when you do this, uh, the suffering just it stops. Yeah, <laughs> it stops, and you recognize that it is a choice. Mm -hmm. Once you once you take some time and and find out what this is, what the ego is, and uh, what uh, good it does, and you understand that suffering has always been a choice, we choose to suffer exactly. because we can choose not to when we change the story up here. Yeah, exactly what you said, and it comes even you know it really lands because I asked you before, right? Would you be sharing? what was going on with you at the time, right? And it wouldn't, you, it was a ego trip, however you call it, right? Uh, and it, and it's just like that. And yeah, tip here for everybody, you know, whatever situation you're in, you choose it. Whether you like this, us telling you now or not, you choose it because it's, it's your life. You do with your life yeah. what you want to do with your life. All right, I get it if you're underage, uh, uh, and, and you're living with your parents, you, you didn't choose it all, all right? But how you feel in this moment and what is going on and how you perceive the world around you, that's absolutely 100% your choice and your responsibility. So, so and, and that is like you two both shared how to, to uh, uh, get over anxiety or, or stop being anxious. It's exactly put. Oh, yeah, you, you can't really get over it. I mean, that, that choose, was my bad, bad, yeah, bad yeah. Cho choice. You can words, choose yeah. every day to fight it. Yeah, it doesn't go away. No, and but it gets smaller, it gets easier, and you develop tools to to face it. Yeah, that's what I. But it's like I said, it was a bad choice of words. Like, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but thank you for saying that. It is. That is it. That is it. That is it. You know. That's how you, 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 and that's how you deal with basically anything, right? Yeah. Basically anything. We can call it anxiety and, and, and whatever feeling or, or state that it's not uh, comfortable. I mean, comfortable in a way that, you know. You actually, don't... discomfort is the right way. Discomfort. Yeah. Is the right path, actually. Yeah, in that sense. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hola. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to to add that um, when Nate said um, 
the time when we are living in our ego. I remembered the time when I was really living in my ego and I was in a, uh, I was a total victim <laughs> of everything that was happening around me. Um, and one person said to me, maybe that will help to someone, um, you know what, when you are angry on someone, just do the complete opposite that you want to do. And it was, I, I didn't understand at that time, but I tried it once. It was so hard. It was like, oh, I cannot do that. You know, it was like, I was angry at someone. I want to punch him. And I was like, okay, so if I want to punch him now, I should hug him? No, no, I cannot do that. That's bad. Bad, all the drama. And then I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try it once. If it's going to work, okay, but I'm sure it's not going to work. But then I did it. It felt so horrible, so wrong at the beginning. But then it was like all the clouds in a second went away and there was sun. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And then later I understood that what happened was I, I didn't uh, pick my ego response, but I picked my soul response. And that's what I'm trying to do now, nowadays because, yeah, it still happens. My ego comes up and it's like, oh, my God, he's horrible. He's dead. He's dead. And then I'm like, okay, what's the complete opposite what I, I would do? And I, I'm trying not to think about it too long because then my ego goes in the game again. And I, when I see what's the complete opposite, I just do it and it's solved. You know, it's, it's, everything's fine. So it's a, it's, a, it's a cool strategy if it helps to anyone here. Yeah, nah, you, you, I mean, it definitely will if you guys will try it. And you remembered uh, that I was doing that and I didn't apply it, I would say, lately. I could be honest here with, with, with Ursha, you know, because I get nervous. I mean, or, or how to say? Ner <laughs> ner <laughs> not, not, I mean, yeah, in a way, in a way I could say now. No, 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 no. It's, it's, you, you, you kind of nailed it. I get anxious, you know, because... We are now in a state that we want to change the, the place where we live in and she want to change the job. And that will uh, also impact our financial situation in a way. So we'll, we will create new ways, you know, to, to earn money and, and get uh, the finances that we want to have and how we want to have them. And, 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 you know, and when I see her being uh, uh, in stress uh, because of that, I, I do, I could relate here. I do get anxious because I'm like, you know, and my, my mind goes like, oh my God, why am I doing this? I'm choosing that. And then I remember when Ula was sharing, when in the beginning, when I didn't like something with her or, or that was making me nervous or, you know, like, like, you know, frustrated, I did exactly opposite. And I said, I love you, you know, and, and that just, everything goes away. I love you. I choose you the way you are and the way you're not because I choose you the way you are and the way you're not and I love you because I choose to love you so so yeah thank you Ulan. you just reminded me me of that again so you know and it does work it does work um, you want to punch somebody like Ula said hug him or you know if you want to say somebody ah, I love you move on it's not worth it. And another thing with angry, when Ula is sharing, I remember that I always say, look, when you're being angry and you want to be right in, you know, uh, let's say that I'm being angry now with Nate, but in reality it's like I'm drinking the poison and I hope he will die. <laughs> That's what being angry is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not going to work. <laughs> not going to work. You know, you're only going to hurt yourself in the, in the end. So, and then instead of having a good relation, you will have, whatever relationship except loving relationship so so yeah uh, that is it we kind of also went all the consequences all around i think we really covered it so anything you guys want to end up for the end um let's do this again <laughs> all right <laughs> all right all righty then all righty i mean look we're open to have new co-hosts so you can you can oh. be a regular if you want I have no, uh, it's all up to you, you know, 
So we have Karina next week also joining us. So if you want to be next week is the Tantra uh, is the topic. But let's first finish this one and then we can officially finish it. And then we, we can have a chit chat with the chat or, or everything. So um, uh, Ula, anything you want to add for the end? I'm really, really happy. I really I happy. Can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you good now, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that uh, you invited Nate mm -hmm. um, because um, yeah, it, it was a really cool and um, helpful um, talk and, and uh, the talk show and what you shared and you m actually have made me share some things that I maybe wouldn't, you know. Um, so you're a really, really big. Um, contribution to this evening so thank you and thank you, um, you Yerner for, for doing all of this alright thank you both I mean really really thank you Aula, you're thank a... you ship <laughs> can, can, can you say that again sorry I was stuck. thank you ship thank you you said thank you both oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. alright all right. I mean bro <laughs> Ours is totally different kind of space now. <laughs> you getting me anxious now. What did I mean? <laughs> hey, look. But but really, uh, uh, thank you. They really thank you, uh, sheep, both of you. <laughs> now somebody might have said, shit, both of you, you know. <laughs> so so let's put the words aside. Yeah, that's what I yeah. wasn't. Thank you, Nate and Ula. Yeah, you are uh, very welcome. Yeah, thank you for, 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 uh, for you know, Ula, you being the constant and Nate, you saying yes, even though I invited you yesterday and you had no hey, real hey, time wait, to wait. prepare. I have, yeah. I have to add something. For All you. right. Add. I, did, I didn't want to, but since there there's an opportunity. Yeah. Um, before you sent me uh, the text yesterday, mm -hmm. um, two hours before, let's say, three o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. I was just, you know, I was outside and I was, uh, I, I was having a, an anxious day, a bad day. And I, I thought to myself, it would be very nice to be on another podcast. And two hours later, you send me the text. So that's how life works. I don't know what to say. It's life is <laughs> magic. That's that. That's all there is. Nah, really, you know, you say it, and and you yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You, you have to speak it into reality. That's how it goes. Yeah. Ula, Ula said it perfectly. She said, you know, uh, you throw it in the universe. And then yeah. sometimes you have to wait two hours, sometimes you have to wait two yeah, yeah. years, but all you have to do not give up on that idea yeah. or whatever it is that you want to do. So, yeah, thank you again. And uh, Night Ignition Podcast, Topic Anxiety, over. <laughs>